So now that we've established what a macromolecule is, we can finally start looking more specifically at those macromolecules that we mentioned. And we'll start off by looking at a polymer known as a carbohydrate. So this is what our flowchart will be entitled, carbohydrates. Carbs for short, and let's just label these as polymers. It's good to make sure that we understand that these are polymers, and we'll see why. So to begin, carbohydrates always, always, always have this format. CH2O. This is an extremely relevant high yield exam question. What does CH2O mean? This means that there's going to be a 1 to 2 to 1 ratio of atoms. What ratio are we referring to? For every 1 carbon, there are going to be 2 hydrogens, and for every 2 hydrogens, there's going to be 1 oxygen. This is a ratio you have to remember and be able to recognize because exams often ask you which of the following is a carbohydrate. It'll give you a bunch of different equations like C6H12O6, C2448, 64. You have to be able to break it down to this ratio and see if it follows and fits this ratio. So this is the magic ratio 1 to 2 to 1 that all carbohydrates have. In addition to this, Another sort of background information that we can talk about um, is that these are the building blocks of sugar. So we'll write this down over here. Building blocks of sugars. What do I mean by this? The sugars that we are looking at or will be discussing are usually about three to seven carbons in length. They usually have a hydroxyl group what is a hydroxyl group again? If you remember from our functional group lecture, it's an OH. And it also has a carbonyl group. So we'll write that down. Carbonyl group. What was a carbonyl group? It was, of course, C, double bond O. And remember, it can be an aldehyde or a ketone. And this is true for the sugars. Sugars can be either aldehyde sugars or ketone sugars. Those are called aldoses or ketoses but we don't need to talk about that right now. And lastly, our sugars, these building block sugars of carbohydrates are pretty hydrophilic. So we'll say very hydrophilic. That's just the quality that they have. Hydrophilic. Okay, so building blocks of sugars, 37 carbons, they have an OH group, that sort of tells you something about their hydrophilicity, right? So this is the carbonyl group, you see that O, there's that O again, that electronegative O, we expect it to be pretty hydrophilic. So that's some basic knowledge of carbohydrates. One other small point you want to remember is this idea of os. Os is an ending, this ending, this uh, suffix, is going to denote a carb. This is a carb. Anytime you see os, like sucrose, glucose, fructose, that's a carb, or more specifically, it's going to be a sugar. This is a way to explain sugar. And another way to explain sugar is through this term right here. It's through, and this is going to be the rest of our flowchart, is going to be devoted to, so, saccharide. So this is another suffix that we can talk about is saccharide, and this literally means sugar. So there are different types of saccharides, and we'll look at each of them step by step. The first one that we want to look at is known as a monosaccharide. What does mono mean again? Monosaccharide would mean, of course, one, one what? One sugar. So we'll write single sugars. These are very familiar. You know these. Uh, you probably have heard of them before. Things like, let's say, glucose. Um, galactose is another one that's a single sugar. Another one would be mannose. Don't worry about the names too much. These are just examples to make sure you have an idea of what we're talking about. One thing you want to focus on, and this is what exams will definitely focus on, is this idea that each of these, glucose, galactose, and mannose, have the same exact what? What is this called? This is a C6H12O6. This is a chemical formula. But the only difference is between these is the fact that you can sometimes have, let's say, a linear glucose. You can sometimes have, let's say, a ringed galactose. You can even have 
uh, different, let's say, aldehyde or ketone locations. We'll say aldehyde slash ketone location. Because remember, an aldehyde was what? It was something that had that C double bond O carbonyl group at the end, right? Terminal. Whereas the ketones had it at a different location. It could be internal. The mannose is simply at the carbon 2, has a different location of its double bond carbonyl group than the glucose. That's all it is. It's the only difference. So these are monosaccharides. Just know that they're single sugars, and they all follow what format? Notice C6, that's my 1, and then 2 is H12, and then 1 again is O6. So they all follow that format. Very good. The next type I want to talk about, if we have monosaccharide, what do you think the next one is going to be? Of course, now we're going to talk about disaccharides. Disaccharides. Disaccharides, this di means what? It means two. This mono means one sugar. This means two sugars. But now we can start talking a little more specifically about how these two are linked. Because remember, we talked about those linkages that make what? Polymers. Those polymer linkages are usually strong and that means they're covalent bonds, but let's be more specific now. So let's write this down as these disaccharides are linked via... Um, what type of reaction would cause a disaccharide to form? Remember, formation would be a condensation reaction. So I'm just going to write condensation, linked via condensation reaction. What's another way to say condensation reaction? Dehydration synthesis also works. And this results in what type of bond? I gave it to you already. It results in a nice, strong, covalent bond. But I want to be more specific now. This covalent bond that links two sugars together, two saccharides together, it's now going to furthermore be denoted and named, you have to know this, a glycosidic bond or linkage, either or. But just know the term glycosidic means that you're connecting two sugars. They're connected via covalent bond. But as a scientist, that's not going to cut it. You have to be a little more specific. What are you going to say? You're going to say they're connected via glycosidic covalent linkages. And that's implied whenever you say glycosidic. So let's just talk about some examples. Um, some examples of di disaccharides, you might have heard of them. Um, one of them is maltose. Another one is sucrose. That's a very familiar one. You probably, most of us really love our sucrose. And I'll explain why. And also lactose. I love lactose. Maltose is the combination of two single glucoses. So glue plus glue. Sucrose, this is one of my favorites. It's the combination of glue and what? Fructose. And this is actually table sugar. This is what is often put into foods to make them nice and sweet. This is table sugar. And lastly, lactose, you've definitely heard of this. It's the combination of glucose plus galactose. You don't need to specifically know these combinations, but just know definitely that these are combined via what? A covalent bond, but how that covalent bond form? Via condensation reaction. Please be more specific. It's a glycosidic bond. So glycosidic linkages combine both of these. And then this is now known as also our lactose is known as milk sugar, of course. And so an interesting fact about this is that this milk sugar is actually broken down in, our, in some people's bodies, most people, um, in America at least, broken down by lactase. Notice the ending. A-S-E, that denotes an enzyme. Some people don't have an effective lactase enzyme within them once they get into adulthood. What do you think that results in if you can't break down lactose? Lactose intolerance. Lactose intolerance comes from this lack of lactase enzyme. No pun intended, of course. So, these are our 